This is a TF Source video review for Takara Tomy 2010 Universal Dominator Unicron. For middle aged Transformers fans, the biggest thing to ever happen in the series was the 1986 animated film, which ushered in a brand new cast of main characters, broadened the scope of the story to multiple worlds with alien races, and introduced us to the biggest bad guy of all time the Chaos Bringer himself, Unicron. It took nearly 17 years, but this demigod of destruction finally came to life in plastic form during 2003's Armada series. As incredible as this giant toy was, there were still some grievances from fans that had been waiting for a proper planet former since their single digit childhood. Hasbro offered up a universe reissue of Armada Unicron in 2008, and many hoped for a more G1 aligned paint scheme. But this reissue was a straight repack of the Armada version. Once again, Takara Tomy comes to the rescue with an incredible version of this monumental toy mold featuring movie accurate paint applications and a remolded head. Warning, stop watching now or prepare to witness the dismemberment of your wallet by Universal Dominator 2010 Unicron. Takara Tomy has pulled out all the stops for the 2010 packaging for Planetformer reissues. Understated flat color illustrations of Unicron's head and upper torso make up the box art. The packaging also sports a splash of blue in the corner, which correlates with the illustration on 2010 Creator Primus's box. The product images on the back give a clear indication that this is not your typical Unicron toy. The colors differ immensely from either of the Unicron Trilogy versions, and the head sculpt is instantly recognizable as something special. The most difficult dilemma facing you at this time will be whether to open the big guy up or keep him trapped inside for safekeeping. But we all know nothing can stand in this guy's way, so you might as well accept his terms and cut the tape. Inside, Unicron is found just like his other incarnations. Robot mode with feet transformed and extraneous parts bagged up on the side. There are a great deal of twist ties, so a regular fingernail clipper is suggested to save time. The included instructions illustrate transformation steps and use of gimmicks as typically expected. There are a few battery saving tabs that need to be removed under the right hand and the head. Attach the skeletal wings and you will finally have your own full-size G1 Transformer equivalent of Bezelbub to terrorize your universe of plastic. The planet shells can be attached to the wings, but many collectors may opt to leave them disconnected for display. As far as ammo goes, one large chest projectile and six Minicon activated Shin missiles can be put in place as well as Unicron's Moon Minicon bug. As far as Minicons go, Unicron was made for them. With over 30 Minicon tabs and three unique storage spaces, Bug or any other figure with a Minicon port can join in the destruction. Like most other large figures, Unicron comes packed with gimmicks like LED eyes and a clear LED powered right fist. Attaching a Minicon to the backside peg releases Unicron's large chest projectile and can fire it quite a distance. This feature is a holdover from the Armadaverse version, as G1 Unicron never featured such a projectile. At over 16 inches tall, Unicron towers over most other Transformers, even his polar opposite Primus. In fact, only a handful of figures can claim to be taller than Unicron, but scale has never been a mainstay in this franchise. Regardless if Unicron is able to claim the title of biggest Transformer ever in the real world, he is simply magnificent. Countless G1 Unicron customs have been crafted over the years, but this gleaming production version may be replacing a good number of those. Some of the greatest moments in all of Transformers can now be recreated in stunningly accurate detail. Swallow Galvatron, hang out with the Fallen, get betrayed by Starscream's ghost, smash the planetary crust off of Cybertron, help Grimlock and crew kick butt. If there were any improvements still needing to be made, it may be suggested that the LEDs could have been a lime green color to match the cartoon persona. The red is cool, but an eerie green LED would have taken this figure over the top. Some industrious owners of the figure may find a way to do it on their own. Also, the paint apps on the remolded head end abruptly, whereas they should have continued around the entire back of the head. All in all, there is still a lot to love on this planet. Although we've only ever seen Unicron transform from planet to robot, the first transformation out of the box must be robot to planet. 
Planet mode is just as wildly different from the Armada version as the robot mode. With orange wing bones and an opaque planetary shell, this rendition has an overall darker tone to it. The frontal view of the planet mode is not quite as cartoon accurate as the robot mode is, but the original animation design of Unicron was never very realistic in the first place. The orange rings and devouring horns are still displayed prominently, as well as the all-consuming mouth. Of note is that a prevalent production mistake plagues the crunching teeth. Some Unicrons were assembled with duplicate sets of teeth on each side instead of interlocking pieces. This misassembly prevents the teeth from closing properly, but does not affect the toy's transformation or overall aesthetic. Some have referred to this mold's planet mode as beach ball mode, but the figure is far from a perfect sphere. Although the intended display orientation of this figure is vertical, the planet's rings simply cannot hold the weight of the whole toy. One must resort to laying the planet on its back without the aid of additional support. Luckily, the aptly named Unicron.com solved this problem for fans years ago with their Armada Unicron plexiglass stand, which is still available on the net in various places. The stand is not 100% perfect, but balancing your evil beach ball on one of these stands can result in an incredibly nostalgic floating G1 Planet Unicron. In Planet Mode, you never know what kind of decaying bots Unicron might run into. This figure is meant to display in robot mode. In fact, the main draw, the remolded head, is not even visible in planet mode. The robot mode surpasses the planet mode in almost every aspect, color scheme, screen accuracy, and overall wow factor. Compared to other incarnations of this mold, the 2010 robot mode commands the stage, while the Armada planet mode seems a little more dynamic than this one. In the end, it all comes down to personal preference, and any Unicron figure is difficult to get a hold of these days, so make sure you choose wisely. There are only a handful of official Unicron figures, and the 2010 Universal Dominator is definitely the king of the hill at this time. But with left field rumors of Unicron possibly appearing in Transformers Dark of the Moon, he may not hold that title for long. If you don't expect to open this box and get your breath taken away after first laying your eyes on 2010 Universal Dominator Unicron, you might want to pass on this purchase. This is the Unicron figure everyone was hoping for when Hasbro announced the Unicron reissue for the Universe line. Since that straight repack's apparent failure at the market, it is unlikely that we will see another large Unicron figure gracing US store shelves soon. On the other hand, it is not often that one of Takara Tomy's remolds is neglected for release by Hasbro, so you'll have to play the market whichever way you choose buy Unicron now, or wait for a US release which may never happen, or will most likely be wildly different in appearance than 2010 Unicron. Regardless, any fan of giant planet-munching Transformers is going to be clamoring for this orange Japanese beach ball of doom. Crawl out of that highly dubious bargaining posture and bring a little more chaos into your collector solar system.